Sandaconda has zero usage in the competitive scene because stat-wise, it's nothing too special even with decent attack in defense. But the snaky fella has some tricks. We bust out Coil to set up, which boosts attack, defense, and accuracy by one stage. And then we can use Scale Shot, which is a 25 power dragon move that hits from 2-5 to five times. This drops our defense one stage, but boosts speed, making the dude kinda fast. The loaded dice held item guarantees we hit this at least 4 times, and we can even boost it by busting out Terra Dragon. Stab Earthquake is also a solid option for coverage, and its forgotten ability Shedskin comes in super clutch to have a 30% chance to heal any status conditions at the end of each turn. Everyone sleeps on Sandaconda, but with the right setup, this thing can definitely surprise some people. So most people hardly even remember that Sandaconda exists, let alone know that this thing can actually be kinda crazy. The Forgotten Fellas are always my favorite to build around and make work, and if you're into that kind of thing, you should hit that subscribe button because I'm on my way to 400k, and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. Now with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Short King Godzilla, as I have an electric spider who's here to do a couple things, but most of all, lay down some, some sticky webs to tangle some fellas up. So. The Tyranitar with the Sandstream is actually kind of bad, because while I am going to be able to outspeed and set up that Sticky Web, they are now just going to be able to attack, they actually end up going for the Rock Slide as opposed to something like the Stealth Rock, and that is going to allow me to live with the Focus Sash, but then I'm just going to get a whole bunch of sand in my eyes, and then I just die. So Galvantula goes down, however, the main importance was that I was able to get up that Sticky Web, because it doesn't look like they have reliable you know, hazard control, and that is going to make my life a whole lot easier when it comes to the friggin' shotgun pretzel snake over here. Now, I decided to switch this thing in because it's kind of free to set up versus Tyranitar. I know that I can get a coil up here, and it's more than likely they're actually going to take this opportunity to like set up Stealth Rock as it's a lead Tyranitar. I kind of imagine that's what it's here for. So as I go for that coil, your boy is about tied in a damn knot over here. We got that plus one defense and attack. It does allow us to take a crunch pretty nicely. And at this point, I'm pretty free to just go for a nice little plus one stab earthquake. We are going to be faster because I'm jolly max speed. And that just takes care of the Tyranitar, which is pretty nice. So what's also kind of good is that we're chilling in the Sandstorm here without going for Terra. I don't take any continual damage from that. And now they decide to bring in friggin' Edgar. This thing's going to get tangled up in the sticky web. We are going to be faster anyway. And the thing about Crab Abominable is it's kind of it just it's a weird guy. Now... Obviously, I'm worried about taking an ice attack and worried about this thing potentially living, but what I'm going to do here is just go ahead and bust out the Terra Dragon. You may th think that I'm a snake, but instead, now we're going full Dragon Snake on him. I bust out the Terra just because I want to get the extra stab boost on this scale shot, and with that loaded dice item, all I really have to do is get that 5 hit roll, and we're in business, baby, so I'm able to outspeed. And the bad thing about Terra Dragon is obviously I'm still going to be weak to an ice move if it's able to take an attack here. And as we're looking at it, if I can get myself the 5 roll with the scale shot, we are absolutely in business. Now we get that 4th hit, it does live, but the loaded dice comes in clutch. We are able to knock it out uh, in one hit with that stab from the Terra. And now, not only are we at full health, basically, we are chilling here. Terra Dragon, we have plus 1 speed with the sticky web up. We also have an attack and defense boost. And the Sandaconda is a freaking nightmare. I, I do, uh, unfortunately, now get affected by the Sandstorm, but... The sand chip absolutely does not matter when you're a snake zooming at the damn speed of light over here. Now, as they decide to bring in the Talon Flame, something that's actually rather interesting is even if this thing is a plus speed, max speed EV <laughs> Talon Flame, at plus one, we actually still outspeed. And I have the Rock Blast, which we don't even need the four hits for. I can just keep a couple in the chamber. Two is going to be able to knock it out, and the Talon Flame goes down without even getting to do anything. Sticky Web doesn't matter in that situation. But the snake does not give a damn. I think it's also kind of fun that even if that thing was able to get off an attack, at plus one defense, I can take pretty much anything it wants to throw at me. And also, if it went for a Will-O-Wisp, we could potentially just straight up shed skin it away. So, now they decide to go into the Zeb Strika. This thing is basically just a nice little breakfast for you, boy. I am worried about the potential for, like, a Terra Flying, so I'm just going to go for the Scale Shot instead uh, of the Earthquake. But turns out they're actually just going to stay normal. And I run the risk of missing the scale shot, which happens more than you would like it to. But I mean, you just toss some scales at him. It turns out we've got scales to spare. We don't even we don't even need the armor at this point. I can just knock him out with four. That is going to result in another defensive drop, but also the speed boost that doesn't really matter. And a scale shot basically go burr at this point. Sandaconda can actually get out of control 
if you're not prepared for the snack. So they do have two Pokemon left. First of all, they decide to go into the Embor, and I kind of expected Buddy to either disconnect or just get the hell out of here at this point, but Embor comes in, takes that speed drop, gets all tangled up in some sticky web, just has to stare at the menacing dragon snake over here, and I'm just gonna go for the earthquake at this point. I figure I've gotten lucky as hell with scale shots at this point. I don't want to miss another one, so I go for the earthquake, does take care of the Embor, and with one Mon left, it's actually going to be the Skelly Dirge. So it comes in, doesn't take the Stealth Rock chip, but is going to be caught up in the web, so obviously we're faster anyway. And an Earthquake is just going to absolute obliterate the Croc. So that is going to do it for Game 1, and honestly, probably couldn't have gone better for, the, for this Anaconda there. But uh, shows the true potential of just anything that gets Scale Shot with loaded dice is kind of crazy. So with that, that was a fun match. Let's go ahead and bring it into Game Number 2. So you already know we got we got one goal here. Well, I guess two. We're gonna we blow up and act like we don't know nobody, but also make the Sandaconda do some absolute nonsense. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right. So this time my opponent's actually gonna end up leading off with the Espeon. Now looking at an Espeon on a team preview, pretty reluctant to click Sticky Web because they're most likely just gonna switch that thing in, magic bounce it right back to us, and that is not what we want. Now the good news at least I can go for a Bug Buzz here as. They actually end up going for the Psychic Terrain is going to be a little bit interesting. It also means it probably is going to be like an expanding force set. But I just decided to go for the Bug Buzz because I figured that can at least knock it down to a Sash. But it actually just lives naturally with 1 HP and I'm just confused as hell out here. But regardless, I know that I can take an attack because I do have a Focus Sash that's not freaking invisible. And as they go for that expanding force, it is going to bring me down to 1, which is perfect. And then I can just finish this bad boy off with a nice little Thunder just in case you know, they wanted to switch. So... That takes care of Espeon and honestly is really nice because now that means they don't have the threat of switching that in and magic bouncing the sticky web and I can pretty freely just kind of go for a sticky web now as they decide to bring in the big chungus. So this matchup is it's like kind of scary because I, I imagine maybe this thing wants to like belly drum here but for the most part I can kind of handle it so I just go for that sticky web it turns out they're actually just going to end up finishing me off with the crunch. And Galvantula did exactly what we were looking for, able to take care of, you know, the Espeon, which is annoying. And now I'm feeling like I have a pretty good opportunity to get a nice little revenge switch into the Sandaconda. I always try to bring it in on just a physical attacker that doesn't really threaten us that much. Because I know I'm going to be faster, I can get up a coil before it even attacks. And that means even if it goes for something like a body slam, it's going to do like 20%. So I go for that coil. Your boy is out here tangled the hell up on a Monday. And after that nice little boost, they can't really touch me. They decide to end up going for a curse, however. And that makes things a little bit interesting. Just kind of matches uh, the defense boost to my attack boost. And I'm like, well, I mean, at least I know that I have the benefit of not worrying about taking too much damage from physical attacks. So I'm just going to go for another coil here. I'm like, you know what, if you want to just boost in front of me, I'm going to continue going for coils. Because I'm pretty confident uh, that Sandaconda can at least come out of this relatively fine. So I go for that coil once again. Turns out they're going to go for the facade. So this Snorlax kind of leads me to believe maybe it's like a rest sleep talk or there to kind of worry about being burnt. But the facade, you know, without any, any status ailment isn't going to do anything. So... At this point, I'm pretty free to just go for an Earthquake. I do want to kind of maintain my physical defense, which is because I know they have some priority in the form of, like, Extreme Speed Dragonite in the back. So I'm relatively reluctant to go for Scale Shots early, just knowing that that priority threat, you know, is there. So as they actually decide to switch into the Gyarados on the Earthquake, it does come in and get an Intimidate, which you know, is annoying. However, I know that they're just going to go for a Water Coverage, so I can actually pretty freely go for that Terra Dragon. And uh, even at neutral, a scale shot should be enough to, you know, at least get some chip here and then allow me to outspeed after the speed boost. So I'm actually going to be faster. This scale shot's just going to go ahead and pop him right in the eyes. And that's got to not feel good. And I'm like, hey, maybe if I can get the five hits here, we're actually going to be in business. Uh, however, the, the luck with the loaded dice sometimes is not always there. We end up getting the four hits, which is still fine because even after the defense drop, I'm now going to be sitting at neutral because I had the coil up. And it allows him to just go for that waterfall, which is resisted and does literally nothing. So, gives us a little waterfall bath. So now the snake is feeling, you know, fresh and clean. And I can just easily outspeed here and pop a cap in his ass with another scale shot. So, that is going to take care of the Gyarados. Now I'm sitting faster than pretty much everything they have, especially if they're you know, touching Sticky Web. And the main thing we're worried about is going to be that Dragonite. Priority is kind of one way that you can stop this if your defense gets out of control. I figure at minus one defense, it's actually not horrible. I probably should have gone for 
the Rock Blast on that turn. But as they're able to now switch freely into the Dragonite, you know, this fella is kind of a threat. The good news is that I do have the super effective Scale Shot, and uh, the bad news is that they also have the ability to Terra here. So they are going to actually end up busting out the Terra. Most of the time, you imagine, going to be Terra normal here uh, to just increase damage from extreme speeds. And depending on how this Dragonite is built, your boy's got a chance. So, they go for that Terra Normal, Diamond on the head, buddy's looking to drip the hell out. They do actually go for that Extreme Speed, and I'm like, there is actually a shot, and we actually barely end up living. And that is actually kind of crazy, and now, a Scale Shot in this situation is real nice. Because as the first one hits, it doesn't do a lot of damage, and that's because this thing's multi-scale ability was intact. But as we continue to hit him, it looks like four hits is actually gonna get really close, but five is gonna bring us on home. So that takes care of the Dragonite with the five hits. We get real lucky with that scale shot, and now we don't have to worry about being extreme speed with that priority, you know, to take us out. So sometimes all it takes is five nice hits to take care of the Dragonite, and with that, that's also gonna get rid of their Terra, which is absolutely amazing. And the Snake is going full Mach 10 speed at this point with all the scale shots, and everything they have left also has to worry about Sticky Web. So one thing they can do is go back into full health friggin' Snorlax, who is just always a menace to take care of. The buddy's been at full health all damn day over here. I know he wants to eat those leftovers so damn bad, but I can just go ahead and get as much damage as I possibly can with, yet again, another scale shot here. And uh, it's just a little bit higher damage if I get the five rolls, so I figure an Earthquake or a four hit scale shot probably isn't going to kill anyway. But we're able to do so much chip, even just with the four, that uh, we should be able to at least finish this thing off and kind of late game clean it up with what we have left. So, sadly the snake is going to go down to this facade, but we've done enough to the squad that hopefully we can clean it up with what we have left. Now, they do have three mons left. Of course, they have the Snorlax. They also have a Charizard and a Gengar back there. So, I decide I'm just going to go into the Scyther here. I can just finish this thing off with a close combat. And then I can kind of conserve things like Quagsire, you know, for uh, the Charizard. So I'm just going to go ahead and beat the hell out of him. Honestly, Snorlax looks like one of the most close combatable guys. I don't know if there's a Pokemon out there that would be more satisfying to close combat. Just right to the big old squishy belly. But that's going to end up knocking out the Blacks. And now they're down to two left. So bad thing about going into Scyther is that now obviously they can just bring right in the Charizard. Who is, you know, kind of our freaking mortal enemy at this point. But as the Zard comes in... This thing isn't a super big threat. Obviously, I can just kind of freely switch into the Quagsire here, which, you know, for the most part should be fine. And then the main thing we're worried about is going to be kind of the Gengar in the back. However, I do have the Sticky Web up still, so I know that everything I have will be faster than that Gengar. So if need be, I can use the Scyther for it. And as they go for the Flamethrower, Quagsire comes in thinking, hey, that, that it hurts a little bit, but not too bad. I ate some leftovers, and we're having a nice little time here. Now, the only thing this thing could really scare us with would be like a... Uh, power herb solar beam or something, but I'm just gonna go for a nice little surf I think my recording actually may have missed they went for an air slash and missed on that turn prior Quagsire was in fact not faster, but I had like a some type of air. I don't know regardless They missed the air slash a surf does not quite knock him out But all I got to do is hit him with one more of them and they decide to continue going for the air slashes And that's gonna actually do a decent bit of damage the problem is we actually get flinched which is like well Damn it, that's gonna be annoying. Now, after some leftovers, I it can at least live one more Air Slash, which is like, that's fine. So, it's, uh, it's all I gotta do. Easy job, easy money. They go for another Air Slash, and Quagmire's like, yeah, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and flinch again, which <laughs> is incredibly annoying. So, we get the full karma of them missing the Air Slash, and now we gotta deal with that. So, at this point, all they have to do is just land pretty much anything, and it takes care of the Quagsire, and I'm like, well, this is making things... Just way more annoying than it needs to be. And one more slash just finishes off the Quagsire. So, you have failed me once again, Mr. Sire. You're going in the box for a little while after that. However, all I really need to do is go into the Gengar. Because I know that I can just outspeed with this thing. And obviously this is my goofy-ass Gengar. I've been working with a physical one because Focus Punch predicting switches into King Gambit is hilarious. Regardless though, I can just go for a Poltergeist. It does knock out the Zard. And with that, their final mon is going to end up being the Gengar of their own. So we got ourselves a little, little old-fashioned Gengar on Gengar violence. And as it does get caught up in some sticky web, the guarantees that I'm going to be faster. Don't have to worry about a little Jolly versus Timid, you know, both max speed, speed tie. So I can instead just beat the hell out of him with his own life orb. I guess with my tongue also. And that's going to take care of it. So down goes the Gengar. That is going to be the end of the game, and I thought that was just a goofy-ass match, and honestly, still a pretty fun one. Now, I do have one game for you left, and this is a little bonus match action that ends up being crazy as hell. 
I can't even explain it. It's best off if we just go ahead and get into it. First of all, looking at team preview, they have a couple problems. They have the rapid spinner in the form of the Don fan. They also have like a Klefki who's there probably to dampen offenses with screens. And those are the two main things I'm worried about. And with that, I mean, obviously also the you know, Volker Runner quiver dancing, but let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so this time my dude's gonna go ahead and lead off with the Don fan. Kind of expected as a lead here, it can both set up Stealth Rock and rapid spin him away, and that is why Don Fan is the GOAT. It is bad for my Galvantula, however, because a lot of the time, people will predict you to go for the Sticky Web turn one, and then rapid spin on the same turn, getting rid of them while they rapid spin. So, I actually decided to go for the Energy Ball, and I'm like, hey, that's gonna do a whole bunch of damage. It turns out it's gonna knock this thing down to a Figgy Berry, which gives it a whole bunch of health back, and they do go for that rapid spin, which is pretty nice. So, the spin's not gonna do much for him, other than, you know, break the Focus Ash on my Galvantula, and at this point, I'm like, well, I'm gonna, I, I'm, I like chaos. I'm gonna end up going for the sticky web here, because I think they probably switch out here, and I really would like these webs up. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. As they actually end up switching into the clef key, and this little set of keys is annoying because it's first of all so freaking high up there, you gotta break your damn neck just looking at the guy. But also, prankster screens are just not fun for me. So I just decided to go for the thunder to get some chip on the thing and kind of see what it wants to do. It is going to end up going for that light screen, which is going to make Thunder do, you know, basically nothing. But at least you get a little bit of chip in the process. And I'm mostly just fine with this because, you know, I got some good chip on the Don Fan. And if they want to get rid of that sticky web, they're going to have to rapid spin. Meaning I can just switch into Gengar on the rapid spin, goes right through them. And main goal at this point is keeping those webs up because it just really does help out the squad. So. As I decided to switch into the Quagsire here, it was nice against the Klefki because I could get both get my rocks up and then also, you know, threaten it with an Earthquake. They're actually just going to go right back into the Dawn Fan. So, I have a situation here where it's like, hmm, are they going to Rapid Spin? I decided to go for the Surf thinking I was actually going to be faster, but instead they go for the Knock Off. Just slams me with his trunk and then I just Surf him, which somehow it freaking lives because Quagsire... Is over here surfing with a freaking squirt gun. So I imagine at this point they probably go for the rapid spin here. I'm like, you know what? They want to get rid of those hazards. I'm going to predict it this time and end up bringing in the gun guard, which is a risky maneuver because it could earthquake. But as I bring it in, they do rapid spin right through me, which is amazing. So we're bouncing around feeling cocky. I am going ahead and checking out the scenarios on what they might potentially switch into or whatever. And as I decide to go for the poltergeist, they stay in and my dumbass just poltergeist to the guy that doesn't have any item. It turns out. You, you need them to have an item to beat the hell out of him with it, and he already ate his figgy berry, which is annoying. So, so that was a fail. They end up knocking me out with the earthquake, and Gengar is like, well, shit. Now, at least what I can do is go into the Cloudster, who also does greatly benefit from the webs being up, because when this thing is fast, it is very scary. I would definitely recommend checking out the Cloudster video. Uh, but I can just go for a nice little water pulse here. Nothing really wants to switch into this, and they are just going to end up saving the Dawn fan, which. Is kind of fine. I, I figure with that health, it's not going to be too big of a threat. And they actually end up bringing in the Rotom here. So Rotom is the kind of fella that can definitely take a water pulse pretty nicely. Guy, in fact, is probably going to be able to wash the clothes a little bit easier with that. Except at this point, I'm like, you know what? If I'm them, I probably click Volt Switch here, or at least go for like a Thunderbolt. So I'm going to make a bold move and end up switching into the Sandaconda. I figure. This is kind of a decent mon for me to set up against if I can at least Terra. And it turns out they went for the Hydro Pump, which is scary, but at least they miss. So Hydro Miss comes in absolutely clutch. And at this point, I'm like, well, I've made it this far. I might as well get the Sandaconda going. So I'm going to end up going for the Terra Dragon. That's going to make it so if they do at least connect on another Hydro Pump, we our Dragon Ass doesn't give a damn. So I go for that Terra Dragon. And you already know the deal is to start coiling. Now, obviously, Rotom doesn't get affected by the Sticky Web, but I am actually faster anyway, because this thing reveals it's going to be like a defensive set. And why I'm fine with this is for a couple different reasons. Now, first of all, if they go for the Hydro Pump, which they do, they also connect. It's not going to do a whole lot of damage. It's not quite a two-hit KO. But also, at this point, if I'm this Rotom, it's watching me coil looks really enticing to go for a Will-O-Wisp. And that's kind of what I want him to do. So, I go for the Scale Shot here. Uh, knowing that at plus one, Defensive Rotom is probably not going to get knocked out unless I get, like, at least a crit on one of them and hit five times. Um, but I end up knocking this thing down to a freaking berry range, and it turns out to have a citrus berry. So, Buddy's got berries all over the damn place, and that's going to make my scale shot not do, you know, quite as much, but at least it's in range for another one to kill. I do hit the four times, and the defensive drop along with the speed boost 
is going to come along with it. So we get all our boosts, and it turns out they are going to go for the Will-O-Wisp. They want to dampen my physical offense just because I'm looking scary and coiled over here. And as my skin is about burnt as hell, I realize, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and get some new skin. The Shed skin activates on the exact same turn and just immediately gets rid of <laughs> the burn, which is honestly the funniest thing ever. No one remembers about Shed skin. And that's why we set up on things that try to burn you. So, at this point, I decided to go for the Rock Blast, as I do want to try to conserve my physical defense. And it's actually going to end up bringing in the Klefki. Now, Klefki does get affected by the Sticky Web, even being 12 feet above it. Um, and it also takes a Rock Blast pretty nicely. Now, the problem with this is it doesn't matter how slow the freaking keys are. Of course, with Prankster, it's going to be able to just move first and get up a Reflect. So, I'm a bit worried about that. We do get it around half with the Rock Blast. Also, I realized earlier in this video that I mentioned about missing a scale shot, but also Coil gives you the accuracy boost, so you don't have to worry about it, so I apologize. I am not going back to fix that, but they actually end up going for that Reflect. I decide I'm just gonna Coil in this thing's face. I do wanna get my attack up even further and also benefit from the old defense boost because having my defense high is, again, kinda scary for the main reason that they have priority with the damn Dragonite back there. Now, they're gonna end up going for the Thunder Wave. That's gonna be able to prankster move before me. It is gonna paralyze me, but again, we don't really care about being status because we have that nice little 30% chance for the Shed Skin to just get rid of it. So, an Earthquake is gonna knock out the Klefki. We get that taken care of. And then also, we just go ahead and just get rid of that skin. Once again, gets rid of the Thunder Wave and the Para is no longer, which is actually hilarious. It turns out we have infinite layers of skin to get rid of status, and we love to see it. So now they can just go into the Rotom once again. Luckily, we have the amount of chip that we do on it because a nice little scale shot is going to be able to take care of it. And watching the washing machine die is one of the most satisfying things ever. This thing has been haunting my Wi-Fi battles for many years. Ever since Rotom decided you could turn into freaking appliances, that thing has been a menace. But we're looking pretty solid over here, other than the fact that there's kind of an impending threat in the back in the form of that Dragonite, which is always scary, but extremely scary when you're working with a setup like this. So, they actually decide to go into the Uxie first. Old Lemonhead comes in here, doesn't even have the respect to open his eyes, and I'm like, well, I'm just gonna scale shot you. I mean, I've made it this far, I'm just gonna continue throwing scales, and if I can get five hits, it maybe would do a lot of damage, but behind the Reflect is where kind of the real problem lies here. Now, of course, every hit ain't doing a bunch, but when it stacks up, it does, end up being a nice little two-hit KO here, at least if I can get five on both. So it does live a bit above half, and that's why we hate Klefki. This Reflect is really kind of breaking my balls at this point. Now, I kind of figured they're probably going to go for an attack, but it turns out they're actually going to go for the Stealth Rock, which kind of mostly feels fine because I'm like, hey, I can continue just going crazy with the... <laughs> with the snake here, after kind of considering going for a coil, I just decided to go for a, another scale shot. I, I figure if I can get five hits, I'm just going to cleanly take care of the Uxie, and we'll just have to deal with whatever's, whatever's left later. So, I knock it down to low health, and then this asshole has a citrus berry also. I don't know how, ma how many berries, this guy must be a farmer. He got berries on literally everything, which is just <laughs> kind of annoying. And uh, the scale shot, that's going to make it so I'm not quite able to knock this thing out with the four hits which is unfortunate, and at this point, my defense is kind of in the shitter. But we are fast, which is, is cool, and while they don't end up going for the attack, they're actually going to yawn. I'm like, I don't know how many times you're going to try to status this freaking snake, but that, that's fine. I'll probably just wake myself up with the shed skin anyway, and that's going to allow me to just go for another coil. I'm like, you know, maybe if I can continue to coil here, and then wake up, and then coil some more, I can be okay against an extreme, extreme speed Dragonite, but they just decide to go ahead and off themselves with the memento, and I'm like, okay, that makes things... It's, it's going to make things a whole lot more interesting for this late game. Now, while that does take care of the Uxie, it drops my offenses, but I kind of just still have enough anyway. But I do, more importantly, fall asleep from the yawn. And also, Shed Skin does not activate, so I'm out here just sleeping. And here's the situation. They have one turn left, or two turns of the Reflect, I believe. And that is going to open the door for freaking Dill Pickle to come in here. And Dragonite is... It was super scary because while I do have the super effective scale shot on him I'm like, you know, maybe I wake up here. Maybe we get shed skinned and I can attack it We do have to burn a turn of sleep, which is not ideal and what's even less ideal is now <laughs> Is thinking go for a dragon dance and with that plus one attack That is gonna make this thing Quite scary. I do at least shed skin and wake myself up from the sleep 
And the bad news is they have one turn of reflect left. While I know I'm gonna be faster, even since this thing has plus one, I have a ton of speed boosts. But the problem becomes, I know my scale shot is not quite gonna be able to kill. And I'm gonna find my little scaly ass in a bit of trouble here. What's even worse is they're actually gonna go ahead and Terra out of the weakness to the dragon. They are gonna go for the Terra flying. So it's not gonna be the Terra normal extreme speed, which kind of gives me hope. Um, but uh, the flying is still, regardless, pretty bad because now it's no longer a super effective hit. And while I do at least outspeed, the first scale shot is gonna do nothing, especially with the multi scale. And I'm like, uh oh, that reflect has absolutely ruined my day along with the memento. So even while I do get a critical hit, I knock this thing to about half. And with the four hits, I'm like, uh oh, I am most likely about to die here. And I do get that defense drop, the dragon claw comes through and that takes care of the Sandaconda. So the absolute body bag the Sandaconda was working up to has now failed us. I blame the Yuxi because honestly that sleep turn kind of hoed me there. Now the Reflect wears away, but it turned too late and I have found myself in some trouble. So the situation is I have the Quagsire who is unaware, so we don't care about the uh, Dragon Dance boost. However, the problem becomes I only can hit this thing with a Surf and that's because with Terra flying, I can't go for an Earthquake which I was really hoping it was gonna be Terra Normal so I could do that. So then I'm forced to go for a Surf. It turns out they're gonna go ahead and bust out the Terra Blast. Now at plus one, it's not really plus one because Quagsire is unaware, but it is gonna be just enough to be a two hit KO. And my Surf is also gonna do freaking nothing. So now the tables have turned. I, have <laughs> I am actually pretty damn screwed at this point. I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna give it to you straight. I am down tremendously bad. And as they go for another Terra Blast, that is gonna take care of the Quagsire, who was the only thing I had that could realistically take an attack from the Dragonite. So, we are now down to three Pokemon left, all of which cannot outspeed this thing because it has a Dragon Dance, and all of which do not have enough bulk to take anything from it. So, while I was having myself a nice little Sandaconda time, uh, the combination of the Yawn and the Reflect and the freaking Dragonite has really <laughs> changed my damn day around. So they do outspeed the Clydeser, can go for the Terra Blast here, and I'm like, hey, go ahead and be a bulky guy for me. Nope, I just died. It, it turns out the Claw was not quite meaty enough, and that's gonna take care of the Clydeser. Honestly, before I even switched into that, I kinda knew that I was screwed at this point. It, this is the, this happens, you know? Dragonites can come in and Dragon Dance, and then all of a sudden the game is ruined for you, and that is looking like at least that's gonna be the situation here. I can go into the Scyther and be like, all right, all right, buddy, I have a Focus Sash here, which I, you know, I don't, but they can just go for a super effective Terra Blast. And the balloons, this thing is just having a birthday party over there, and I am not having any damn fun at this party. It would be actually kind of lit if I had Quick Attack with the Technician Boost on the Scyther there, but I don't, and I'm just gonna go ahead and give this guy the satisfaction of cleaning me out here, because... I did, I, I, I almost had him with the Sandaconda, but you know, they made a nice little sequence of plays that resulted in my ass getting absolutely hoed by a Dragonite, and you know, sometimes that is just the way it goes. The Dragonite reverse sweeps, and another Terror Blast is gonna finish it off. So that's gonna be the end of that one. I thought it was just fun to at least see, you know, Sandaconda doing Shed Skin stuff and then be kinda scary, but uh, little little curveball late game sweep there for you. So thank you guys very much for watching. Had a lot of fun with this one. And uh, don't forget to leave a like on the video if you did enjoy. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.